work her parents did for Kingdom Hall, the more Cynthia rebelled. I pushed the envelope more. I went out and I did whatever I thought I was big and bad enough to do. Uh, sneaking out with my boyfriend, going places I had no permission. When Cynthia was 13, her older sister married a man who was not a Jehovah's Witness. Her sister's actions and her parents' reaction finally brought Cynthia to a breaking point with the religion. My parents had literally thrown all of my sister's clothes out on the front lawn because she had gotten married. I just began to, to think, you know, this is your child. How can you say you love your child and you love God, you know, but you're, you're treating your child this way? I just began to question. It was just something inside of me that just said, this is not the love of God. So I began to search for God. Cynthia secretly prayed to God and asked him to reveal himself. To talk to God for the first time was foreign because, you know, the Jehovah's Witness had taught me that God doesn't speak to people. So, you know, here I am talking to this God that can't hear me. I don't know if he can hear me. Then in her junior year of high school, she experienced something she'd been taught could never happen. She believed she heard the voice of God. I actually had a pinched nerve and at the time no one knew what it was so I said Lord if you heal me you know I'll serve you I don't know who you are I don't know how to serve you but if you heal me I will I heard the Holy Spirit say okay and so I turned my neck and something snapped in the side of my neck and immediately I was healed and you know, I knew it was him and then immediately the peace that I felt once that came over me. Uh, it was awesome. Cynthia kept her personal experiences with God a secret until she moved out of her parents' home. She knew there would be grave consequences. When she was 19 and living independently, she denounced the Jehovah's Witness religion. I wrote a letter to one of the elders of the congregation and I told them that I no longer wish to be a witness. Um, I heard later on that they publicly uh, disowned me uh, at the service. So did Cynthia's parents. When my parents disowned me, it was devastating. And I remember my dad calling me out of my name, telling me I was not welcome. And it just, it crushed me. There were so many different emotions, but one thing that I kept in the back of my mind is that I had heard the voice of God. So if, if anything happens, I knew he talked to me when he healed me. So that was what kept me going. A couple of months later, Cynthia met a pastor at a local gym, and he invited her to church. Because of his invitation, she attended a Christian church for the first time in her life. At first, she was afraid. I had been taught that all other churches were tied up with Satan the devil, and to go in and embrace that would be basically worshiping the devil. But there was such a peace that came over me that I knew it was God and I knew it was Him leading me. I didn't know how, but I knew it was. That day, Cynthia learned about Jesus and His plan of salvation. Cynthia gave her life to Christ. When I first got saved and I asked Christ into my heart, I felt clean. It was like um, going to the altar, it, was, it felt like I was being rinsed of everything. So it was a, it was a freeing experience. It was, um, it was indescribable. Cynthia's new faith was genuine, but her conversion to Christianity only widened the gap between her and her family. I fell into a deep depression, and I can remember having a bottle of pills, and I called one of my friends, and I basically told him goodbye because I was planning on killing myself. And right before that happened, he knocked on the door, thank God, and he prayed me out of that depression. With the support of her church, Cynthia drew on God's strength and encouragement. Her victory over depression came when she started reading the Bible and memorizing scriptures. Cynthia says her hardships only made her faith stronger. I learned so much about who Jesus was. Um, from my provider, my comforter when I was lonely. He was my peace, um, you know, when my mind would try to be confused. You know, he's been my mother, he's been my father. He's been everything to me. Today, Cynthia is still estranged from her family, but she has forgiven them and prays for them. She shares her life-changing story in her book, The Cost of My Salvation. There's definitely a, a difference between religion and relationship. I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. 
I live my life based on the relationship because I want to be pleasing to him. And that's so absent from the rituals that come with religion, there's no comparison. If there's someone today watching and you want Jesus and maybe you were taught that he's just a prophet, I would encourage you today to just invite him into your heart. His blood is more powerful than anything. His spirit is more powerful than anything. So if you really want to seek him and if you diligently seek him, he will find you. You know, as Cynthia said, if you diligently seek God, he will find you. Listen to what the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And even if your mother and your father abandon you, God promises never to leave you or forsake you. I would encourage you, open up your heart to God. Talk to him and you will discover you can have a real relationship, not based on religion, or ritual, but on love. He's a God that hears you and will respond to you if you look to him. As a matter of fact, before you say anything to him, he already knows everything about you. So open up your heart to him and your life to him. He's just waiting for you. That opening up starts with invite him in, him, and it's called prayer. It's a conversation between you and him, as I always say. And if you don't know how to pray, let's pray together. Let me help you get to him. Father God, I want to know your love. I want to know your acceptance and the freedom that comes from you. I've known rejection from, from people, from friends. I've even found it difficult to forgive myself. But I pray that you would help me know your love now. Help me accept what you have given to me in your son Jesus. Help me know what you have in store for me. I pray these things, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now coming up after the break, a rap artist creatively shares the entire gospel in only five minutes. You don't want to miss it. Stay with us. and River Songs for concerts, ministry, and speaking engagements. Just call the number on your screen or go to riversongs.com. Welcome back to Turning Point. We hope you're feeling encouraged and inspired by now. Please take a moment to let us know what you think on Facebook at Turning Point Zone. We want to close the show with more inspiration from a young man whose story we brought you recently. Here is the gospel in five minutes from Propaganda. Enjoy. It's the full story of life crushed into four minutes. The entirety of humanity in the palm of your hand crushed into one sentence. Listen, it's intense, right? God, our sins, paying everyone life. The greatest story ever told that's hardly ever told. God. Yes? God the maker and giver of life, and by life I mean any and all manner and substance, seen and unseen, what can and can be touched, thoughts, image, emotions, love, atoms, and oceans, God. All of it is handiwork, one of which is masterpiece, made so uniquely that angels look curiously. The one thing in creation that was made with his imagery, the concept, so cold, it's the reason I stay bold, how God breathed in a man and he became a living soul formed with the intent of being infinitely, intimately fond. Creator and creation held an eternal bond. And it was placed in perfect paradise till something went wrong. A species got deceived and started lusting for his job. An odd 